कम इन प्लीज गुड मॉर्निंग मैम गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग सर टेक यू सीट प्लीज थैंक यू सर अनिकेत हिडे Yes. Uh, you are from IIT Bombay. Yes, sir. And you are doing some associate, uh, some job. Uh, you are still doing, or you have left it? Sir, I have left it. Uh, it was associate consultant in Bain and Company. Okay. Now, Aniket, you are uh, uh, you have done energy studies in IIT Bombay. You are associated with the energy. Uh, now, can you tell us something energy science and engineering? <coughs> What exactly is this part of electrical engineering or? No sir, it is a separate department. Separate. Okay. Now, can you tell us something about the energy scenario scenario in India, fossil fuel based energy, but other sources also? Let us consider how much of crude uh, India is producing crude oil yes, as of now. Sir, uh, we are producing uh, around fifty to twenty percent of our demand, mm -hmm. and majority of it is being imported, and that is also the major cost. Okay, now uh, what are the major importers? Uh, India imports. I mean, what are the major uh, import India export importers for India? Of course, oil. Sir, it is uh, Israel, Saudi, and uh, can you say something about percentage overall? Around to eighty-five, you say import from outside. Out yes. of that, what is the biggest pie? If you draw a pie chart, what will be the, the in in the order of uh, importance? Major importers. Sir, I am not aware of the exact numbers, but approximately. So, who is the biggest one? Sir, um, Israel, I think, is the biggest one. Uh, okay. Now, I'm apart not... from this, there is any any other? Uh, 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 it's called gas, <coughs> natural gas. India does India is a net importer or net exporter of natural gas? Sir, it's also energy source. Yes, sir. India imports natural gas, um, and it is also the fifth largest importer. Of natural gas. How much of India produces naturally? They, they also India also produces a lot of natural gas. Yes, How much? sir. Uh, we produce around fifty-three percent of our demand. Around forty-seven to forty-five percent is imported. Okay. Now, uh, suppose uh, you become the energy secretary or in charge of energy this thing in India uh, at the city level. What will be your main focus? Because this, as you very correctly said, is a main export outgo from India. Energy. Yes. Sir. Now, and because of geopolitical reasons, as you said, Ukraine has shut down. What will be the main focus to make India energy secure in future? Sir, currently we are importing forty-seven percent of our energy needs. So my main focus would be to reduce that as much as possible. That forty-seven percent majorly stems from oil and coal. To replace the oil, my focus would be to shift to alternate uh, mode of transport like electric mm -hmm. vehicles or hydrogen vehicles, along with promoting the public transport. And reducing the coal would be done through more renewable energy sources. Are you sure that you will be able to? I am talking about a short term scenario and a long term, obviously. Short term scenario, maybe five to ten years, will it be possible with the gestation period of a, a non conventional energy source like wind power, etc. It's not so short. Sir. So that period, five to ten years, you want a short term window and a long term window. Short term window, what are the steps you take? Sir, as you rightly said, gestation period would be high. Uh, in the short term, the steps would be to increase the efficiency of the current systems. That would imply the efficiencies of the current power plants. We can operate five to ten percent load plant load factor will improve. Sir. But apart from that, the sources, main sources of crude and gas, and of course coal, obviously. Sir, coal we have, but high-grade coal, coal we don't have. Sir, so, so how, what will do? Again, to uh, reduce the uh, dependence on oil, the short-term solutions would be to increase the ethanol blending, uh, so that the oil import decreases. And EV push is going on. I think we need to strengthen it by uh, setting up more charging infrastructure. Across the country. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Nikhil, you are <coughs> aspiring to be a civil servant, sir. Uh, can you tell us what is the governance structure in a district, sir? In a district, uh, the collector is the uh, head, 
uh, he's head of what head of the revenue department and in some cases also the he also has the executive the district magistrate power uh, in addition to that below him uh, there are sir uh, i am not able to recollect exactly if you permit then i can uh, take a guess yeah. sir below him uh, there are tehsildars if i am not wrong and uh, they look after uh, one tehsil and then uh, there, there is also the third tier of uh, governance which is uh, jilla parishad as we call it first complete the structure of revenue department the collectors sir i will have to read about it yeah that is one then what else is there you are talking about three tier yes sir uh, so jilla parishad <coughs> at a district level yeah. then panchayat samiti at a taluka level at least in maharashtra and then gram panchayats at village level yeah what else sir on the executive side there is also ceo uh, who is uh, responsible for the ceo of what ceo of jilla parishad okay then sir i am not able to recollect the what are the other functionaries in the district sir uh, uh, there is an uh, sp uh, on the law and order side uh, and i'm um, uh, sir is there any specific uh, two dozens department sorry sir there are two dozens department in the district sir i will have to read about it yeah okay no issue now <clears throat> who is called father of marketing management marketing you have mentioned actually in your text sir okay. uh, sorry sir i am not aware of it have you read any book on marketing management no sir i have not not okay <clears throat> now tell us for the you see providing safer uh, working environment to women what are the legal uh, provisions in the law to ensure their safety at the workplace sir one major provision is the prevention of sexual harassment at workplace uh, which requires <coughs> this requires to take very stringent actions in case of any issues what 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 will be the stringent text so whenever there is a complaint filed by any women employee there has to be internal complaints committee which has to be formed okay and uh, the investigation has to be impartial in the sense no, that is okay but what is the stringent actually action which you are mentioning so the actions can range from uh, varied uh, uh, a variety of uh, penalties like uh, stopping the appraisal to right from the dismissal of the employee as well and in certain cases the icc can also refer the complaint to the police so it is referred to police also yes sir where it is applicable so there is a certain threshold for the uh, number of employees but i am not aware i am not able to recall the number is it applicable to government offices Yes, sir. I think it is applicable. And unorganized sector, sir. Unorganized sector. I am not sure. There is a certain employee threshold which is there. So if it is a company of just two people, it it is not applicable as far as I know. Yeah. What was the need actually to bring uh, out this legislation, sir? The overarching need is to increase the uh, female labor force participation. No, that is okay. What was the background of this act? sir i am not able to recall the exact case which led to this there is something very important actually it went to supreme court then supreme court issued very comprehensive guidelines sir it was vishakha guidelines yeah. if i am not wrong okay thank you thank you sir hello aniket so uh, you have mentioned about uh, your parents being from you know the the government service public sector services where your your mother has retired from the, uh, being the superintendent of midday meal scheme she right? is still working she is still working so 
can you tell me the weaknesses in the system and if you get selected how would you improve the system sir specifically with respect to india yes sir it is a scheme which provides one cooked meal uh, to the children from class 4 to 8 in government school the weaknesses as i discussed with my mother as well is that one we are uh, we are focusing on filling the uh, calorific requirement of children but not focusing on the nutritional requirement micronutrients uh, that they might need the second is the uh, leakages in the system as in when the storage of the grains they sometimes get damaged the third is we are also providing this scheme to uh, private granted schools where the children might not opt for it and that is actually leading to wastage of grains so these three are the issues which i am actually feeling uh, if i were to solve them then coming to the first part the nutritional value i think some steps which are being taken like the fortification of rice uh, is the right step in addition to that we need to uh, provide millets or uh, recently it has nutri slice bar which is a millet based bar has been introduced so such kind of steps should be taken so uh, are you aware of the budgets that are allocated to each and every school and uh, as you said the leakages are just in the food grain part or any other supply chain as well sir it is across the supply chain mm -hmm. uh, not only food grains there are, there are also provisions of supplying vegetables and oil so even the vegetables quantity is not exactly measured and put in the dal or the sabzi so th these leakages need to be uh, reduced to provide more nutritional value and is the mid day meal achieving its objective of being able to support education specifically when it comes to uh, you might have discussed it with your mother yes sir i feel it is achieving its objective because the enrollment in general has uh, seen it to be increased and also there was a survey conducted by hrd ministry mm -hmm. where it said that 72% of the children uh, really like the food that they were being provided mm -hmm. so i think it is a success we need to Uh, increase the nutritional content now but it has dropped after covid because of the dropout rate because of the schools being closed yes sir yes so is it coming back now now are the students getting enrolled again or is the dropout rate still high sir it is gradually recovering at least in the taluka where my mother is working mm -hmm. and i also discussed with her whether we can introduce some form of uh, lucrative items like maybe chocolate millet bar to get back the children but her point was that just if we start the scheme children will come back because it is so much important for them so she is very positive and even i am positive that this will lead to enroll enrolling back of children all right good to hear that second you have mentioned that you are an automobile enthusiast sir right can you tell me the difference between service providers of blue taxi versus other taxi providers like ola and uber sir the blue taxis are uh, driven by the owners themselves mm -hmm. and uh, while on the ola and uber the taxis are uh, may or may not be owned by the drivers are you sure you know the difference because it's pretty important <coughs> and i believe that now nowadays when we are talking about and as sir also said uh, the electric vehicle ecosystem coming into place so blue taxis are basically evs sorry sir i took it as a meru which runs in mumbai okay is that also called blue taxi yes sir it okay. is so blue taxi and uber are primarily the differentiating factor is that this is an electric vehicle whereas the uber and ola they run on gas or fuel in other parts of sir. the country yes so that's good uh, but you should be knowing this being an automobile enthusiast sir. right so where have you been on road trips sir um, in the northern part i have been to shimla narkanda area mm -hmm. in the western part to udaipur uh, area the southern part bangalore mysore uti in the eastern part to sikkim which is the best place to drive sir i would say it's himachal pradesh himachal pradesh yes. Sure. That's nice. Good. Thank you, sir. Hello, Aniket. Hello, sir. Aniket, how do I look? Do I look fat? 
sir you look perfect i look perfect how can i be more perfect if you will click my pic sir i, I think make me look better more better sir i don't think you need it but i can click your pic in a portrait uh, mode so that uh, you stand out even more than the background okay uh, i am planning to buy a camera should i uh, buy a mobile phone and which there is a camera or should i go for some other kind of camera sir it depends on uh, on the level of photography that you want to do so a dslr would definitely have more adjustment as compared to a mobile camera okay but for your daily use i think mobile camera should suffice but these days uh, the mobile companies they are advertising a 100 megapixel camera so you can click it and find details so what is the difference between dslr and that camera sir it is not really about megapixel megapixel okay. will just give you the uh, quality of the image but the way a camera captures a light it depends on the shutter speed the exposure the iso mm -hmm. the this adjustment ranges are much more in dslr okay so if you have to capture a night sky then you cannot do it with your mobile you will need a dslr for that so so you want me to buy a dslr if you want to capture night sky yes. so do you have a dslr no sir i majorly try with photo mobile going ahead i am planning to buy one okay like you are from mumbai sir uh, do you think mumbai can survive without taxi drivers and without auto drivers so they have become a major part of transportation i uh, i want to know uh, like in mumbai there has been a lot of uh, rebuke against the drivers from uttar pradesh and from bihar certain political parties uh, in maharashtra they are against the people coming from bihar and uttar pradesh so what's your take on that so there were some initial clashes but they have reduced now <coughs> um if mumbai can live without taxi and cabs i feel that will be possible only if the public transport is geared up uh, metros are being developed no i want to know about uh, let us suppose you are posted in mumbai and there is a clash between a local political party and uh, with the auto drivers basically from bihar how will you basically solve that conflict sir our article 19 provides the uh, freedom to work anywhere but there is a lot of political pressure from the politician that uh, you should come out with certain directions or bylaws so that they are not allowed to drive the autos sir uh, that is that will be against the constitution okay so uh, i can explain it to the political executive that there there cannot be any restriction uh, to be placed on the profession to be practiced and i will go by the law sir i i will not uh, try to prohibit a certain section of society from driving autos uh, aniket do electric vehicles cause pollution or they are pollution free sir they are pollution free in the tailpipe emissions but considering our 70% of the electricity still comes from coal they cause pollution at the power plant site so we need to move more to renewables to reduce the overall pollution caused by a particular electric vehicle have you heard about the recent cases uh, in with this electric vehicles they have uh, catched the fire sir so don't you think there is apprehension amongst the public with respect to these electric vehicles the catching fire sir these fires were caught only by the two wheelers four wheelers have been relatively safer so you mean to say we a technology of two wheelers is not that good sir it is not about the technology the battery in two wheeler is more exposed to the heat outside and that is the reason why they are catching fires in addition to that there were also some manufacturing defects in the battery which came to limelight so following a more uh, stringent quality control and using some cooling solutions in the two wheeler can be the uh, way ahead okay so you have worked in bain and company yes sir so when the company was founded sir it was uh, in 1970s but i'm not uh, 1973 sir okay uh, aniket one last question second last question okay. so what is the difference between district collector deputy commissioner and district magistrate sir all three of them had the district but um, if i am not wrong can one person can district collector be the deputy commissioner too sir there are some differences with the executive powers but i am not uh, aware of it okay aniket how many people are participating in this mock interview right now 
sir uh, there are six uh, five members and i am the person and then there are some uh, supporting staff the fans okay thank you okay. aniket can you just explain the meaning of your name ma'am aniket is a combination of two words a uh, and niket which means a person who does not have his own house that is niket but he considers the whole universe as his house okay uh talking of the electric cars do you think these robotic cars the self driving cars how soon do you see them uh, ma'am in india yeah in india ma'am i would say the timeline would be between 5 to 10 years because the way they work is they follow the demarcations on the road so currently our city roads are not capable of supporting those car but the new highways like the mumbai delhi highway or the mahasamrudhi highway in maharashtra hmm. they are access controlled and well demarcated they can fly over there okay so highways are health compliant but inside roads need to be yes ma'am all right what is amravati known for ma'am amravati uh, gave uh, the country first lady president and it is also cotton growing belt in the eastern part of vidarbha yeah uh, now working as a consultant with bain what exactly will you do ma'am uh, in consulting firms any problem which the client presents it's broken down into two work streams so i was a part of one of the work stream which and one was that so ma'am it differs across the cases so my first case was with an ngo and the my work stream was uh advising them as to where they should expand their care centers okay if i say these consulting firms are basically misleading their clients because profit is the driving force how far am i correct ma'am there have been some cases uh where the consulting firms uh, were in trouble but that cannot be the not the consulting picture. firms were in trouble my question is they mislead their clients because they do not actually give the solutions say if i uh, am today uh, an entity of 200 crores at the end of a year when you are advising me i'll just be left with 2 crores oh ma'am that does not happen that happens uh it might have happened in certain cases ma'am but the two cases which i worked on the client actually followed our advice they opened a care center in varanasi it is uh, running even with more capacity than what we had predicted the second case was in real estate we brought down the pre construction timeline by one month and that led to huge savings for the client okay now if there is a 3% rise in temperature would there be a safe place on earth ma'am there might be few pockets <laughs> but they would be severely reduced because even with 2% rise there is a prediction that chennai mumbai kolkata or the port cities might be inundated which will be the first area which will be inundated in india ma'am i think it will be somewhere along the southern part which just in point a little more the kanyakumari region ma'am if i'm not wrong no your way off from uh, the submersion area ma'am i like to read on it it is west bengal sundarbans sundarbans will be the first area which will go under sea thank you which will be the first country which will go under sea ma'am i like to read over it maldives thank you ma'am okay uh my uh, next question is how many vacancies are there in this year for the civil services for which you are vying one of them you are vying for how many vacancies ma'am there are around 860 i am not sure of the exact number you are very close to it 861 plus minus is allowed thank you so why from tech because you also done your mtech yes why from tech to civil services what is the commonality between those two ma'am uh Uh, the reason why i switched from tech to civil services is that i can use the same technology at a much larger scale for example if i had to do a career in tech i might have focus on one specific aspect of energy maybe solar or wind but here i can work across the renewables if i uh, become the civil servant 
the common aspect i would say ma'am would be the innovation which we need to do day to day in both of these cases and that will also be helpful in my civil services do you think you will be able to take tech to the civil services Ma'am, to some extent, yes, especially in the implementation part. So, whatever my understanding is from the energy engineering, I think I'll be able to implement it. Implement Only it. if you get a project for energy. You are in an area where energy is the constraint and we need to work on it. Otherwise, it could be health, it could be education, it could be sanitation. Now tell me, how can you bring technology to these core areas? Ma'am, in IIT, we are... Uh, taught many things along with core. So for example, we I have also learned coding. So uh, the way these applications work, uh, can I can uh, actually understand how to develop this application. The second thing in Bain, I have also learned. But you'll learned, be so bogged down by administration. Ma'am, it would just be the input. Maybe uh, I would get to understand whatever is going on a little bit better uh, since I have the tech background. And also drawing insights from the data which I have learned from Bain. So analyzing the data and actually taking decisions based on data. Okay, you really need to prepare a good answer for that. You have to give me a convincing answer why from technology and a very good consulting firm that you're working with, with an MTech in it, why do you want to transition? My last question. Do you think the youth today or people by and large in India are an unhappy lot? Are they happy? Where do we stand on the happiness index? Ma'am, I'm not able to recall the number, but uh, we are... Approximate? We are along the bottom. 50% and above or 50% and below? I think it is below, 50% okay. and below. So why are we an unhappy lot? We have sunshine, which is easily available. <coughs> we still have, you know, good percentage of water available to us. We have fresh food. So what makes us unhappy? Ma'am, I think uh, one would be the employment opportunities in the youth. And the second would be the quality of life. As you rightly said, we have the water available. but The basics we have. Yes, ma'am. But uh, for example, in the cities, the air is polluted. The water also we get, but we cannot drink the water directly from the taps. The quality is an issue. So your happiness depends on these factors or it is a larger uh, basket? Ma'am, it is a larger basket, but it is just how uh, quality life you are leading. Uh, that how mentally well you are while uh, every day. So why is this mental uh, unhappiness increasing, particularly among you? Is it a challenge now for us? Are we recognizing the mental problems or is it all, all right? Ma'am, there are two aspects to it. First is the youths who have jobs. They are uh, stressed because of the work, uh, con working conditions. For example, even uh, in the corporate, I have seen my friends working 12 hours and that too on a single laptop, which is strenuous. 12 hours is cakewalk. As an administrator, you will be on your toes 24 hours. Yes, ma'am. But uh, working on a laptop for a 12 hours uh, becomes strenuous for them. And sometimes... And that leads to mental depression? To some extent, yes, ma'am. It ma does. Okay. And they are also required to work on the weekends. So, uh, a man needs a break uh, during this his work. So, I think it is due to strain. Then you need to really have a hard look at the life of a That's civil really servant. servant. Okay, before you take the step, have a hard look at it. My time is up. Thank, Thank you, you ma'am. Thank you, Ariket. You can wait outside and we'll call you back for feedback. Thank you, sir. Can I come in, sir? Come in, please. Ariket, take your seat. Uh, interview is over. Be relaxed. Uh, no issue. Now, how do you rate yourself? On a scale of one, one to ten, yourself, your own <coughs> mark today. When is your interview? 13th May. Still time, not too many. But uh, how will you uh, uh, evaluate yourself? Scale of one to ten. Uh, sir, around 6.5. Middling, I mean, you are a little above average that you want to do. Why? Why is not outstanding? 
sir there are there were some uh, content gaps for example district administration i should know uh, that i need to polish if i can do that i think i will be better than this see even energy is your own subject uh, your own subject obviously uh, anybody who is there will be asking the energy also will have to be uh, more thorough sir you understand because energy <laughs> solution is not uh, more electrical energy because ultimately the energy as you have very correctly said is the energy is a polluter dead pollute what i'm not talking about the pollution energy actually what india is desperately needing is increase their domestic production right which obviously there is a lot of pressure government of india is having new findings of the national company like ongc oil india they are being pressurized not pressurized i mean they are being uh, given a task also to increase the production level for which. so all these things must read uh, new acreage policy oalp because you are energy so naturally crude gas production how much and what is the pricing mechanism the, all this you know is an administered down early it was administered pricing gas now it is not an administered is a free market pricing brand crude the geopolitically how it affect india's uh, not only the uh, the net outgo but it also affects uh, the 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 defense <coughs> policy the the foreign affairs policy external affairs this is all energy security is linked with closely linked with why india can't uh, kind uh, kind uh, take uh, or uh, take a hard stand against russia because of the energy only sir so not because of the defense but because of the energy so these are all the things you now but that is a subject yes uh, it is administration your parents are from this thing could have a little more but more than that for your voice is sometimes cracking uh, for a 26 year old boy your voice should be smooth and it should be kind of so you sometimes your confidence is a kind of anybody you have done mocks earlier Yes, sir. Anybody has uh, commented on this? Uh, sir, in one mock they had said that there was a gravelly note associated exactly. with oh, the it. cracking is that mm-hmm. this note is a little gravelly and what I'll say is a not a smooth flow kind of. Your voice should have been at this age, 20 or 26, should have been a smooth cut. This voice was the voice tonality is actually of an elderly person. Mm-hmm. The tonality. Little gives a little, it is very little unusual. So, practice before a mirror. Still time. Delivery. Uh, just see any paper. You question. You ask yourself. Prepare some ten questions and uh, give them. And just practice. Delivery. Uh, your voice uh, loud. No issue of that. And uh, sometimes you are when you are confident, your uh, voice is coming up a little more. But when you are not really knowing something or you are not confident about something. So knowledge, obviously, this is of course the uh, your body language, etc. You are very pleasant, very nice. So you earn sympathy of the board, no doubt about that. But your uh, so many things we did not didn't have time, like the foreign affairs, the foreign policies, India. Mm-hmm. Of course, you are the third choice, but still there will be economy as a whole. So many things are happening at uh, economy. Uh, you can think uh, economic paper you are reading one so, you must read one <coughs> paper economic. Mm-hmm. Paper. In economic times, anything you like, then the, some and many of the things uh, when ma'am was asking about some some issues which are actually directly affect you uh, as a as a not as a kind of a thing like your own thought on uh, happiness in life kind of a thing that uh, you are uh, getting a little uh, this thing uh, not very sure of so some of the issues or overall issues etc. Just think yourself <coughs> or maybe discuss with your friends or somebody. And have some uh, because they are there may be some couple of questions on that. It's not really knowledge based, but your attitude based or your uh, kind of thinking on the society as a whole. Maybe that could be some embarrassing questions like all these uh, you know, the religion versus uh, you know the free choice and all these things are happening. The Jahangir Puri and all these you know, they are targeting some. These are very dangerous questions. Uh, so we we'll have to be kind of prepared for their certainly I mean they don't want you to uh, say what the government is saying but you can't also go much beyond what the so constitution law uh, kind of thing but they are uh, kind of you are working on razor sage so in this way also <coughs> that way you so those are some practice uh, issues 
and economy somebody can say about the recent uh, dem democracy versus non democracy <clears throat> then the there was some expectation on the pm's uh, uh, speech uh, last uh, evening about this uh, 400 years of baba tek bahadur sorry guru tek bahadur yeah, there somebody was expecting about the <coughs> religious tolerance etc but he pm did say carefully he part of the history part of it so somebody may say why not <coughs> this is an opportunity for pm to say something so all these are very something to kind of provoke you so all the, the these are the questions you can one or two may if you are not uh, anything you want to ask us sir uh, <coughs> the same question actually uh, for example sir asked me how will you deal with up bihar auto walas when they are being trying to push them out so I said that I'll stick to constitution, but that seemed very um, I, 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 like idealistic answer. What are, what is the actionable answer that I need to give? Actionable answer is like so. They actually in theory there should be dichotomy between a politician and an administrator, but in reality the, that thing doesn't apply. So whenever a politician will be asking you, it is important that you should tell him about the lacunas also. If he will mm -hmm. give you some wrong uh, directions. And if you will implement that wrong uh, action, what repercussions the politician will have to face? You will ha you will have to tell him because you you are a bureaucrat. You know sir. more about rules. He knows less about rules. Sir. You should tell him, give him examples. If we will do this, this might have bad re repercussions. In in a short term, it might be good. It might fetch him the results. But in a longer term, it is not going to fetch him the results. <laughs> there might be bigger political repercussions for him. He might end up losing. So you, you can explain him these things. So this is how you should be basically handling the politician. No, so that he may say, ki, don't you need to result in your uh, transfer or shift in QAG. Yes. They can. But then you say, sir, this is a, this is a professional a bureaucrat. I'll be, should be able to face that situation. So, I mean, you could take a moral stand. Yes, I, I'll be, I mean, yes, if I do that, then maybe there may be repercussions on my career as well. My so, career also and on, on your career too. My career have... is your career. <laughs> मीडिया भी बहुत एक्टिव रहता है मतलब आज की डेट में अगर आप बोलते हो किसी को भी एडमिनिस्ट्रेटर को बोलते हो गलत करने के लिए तो मीडिया इतना सोशल मीडिया इतना है इंडिया I'm on the right side of law, so if it has any consequences, I'm prepared for those. But I will do my duty. Right. A very simple, sweet answer. No yeah. controversies. Now, when you talk of energy, you should also prepare yourself as nuclear as an alternative, <laughs> because there was a talk earlier. Again, that talk has surfaced. So, nuclear as an alternative, whether it is clean, whether it is possible, civil use, all that you should. All these you must. That and the last. Or the first thing which you need to prepare is a very convincing answer why hmm. from tech to hmm. civil services. Yeah. Not that I'll be you know bringing technology into it. There may be no occasion for bringing technology uh, into your civil services job. So just prepare a very very convincing answer on that because that question is invariably asked. Some form yes, or the other. Some form directly, directly somebody may touch on that. Anything else you want to ask? Oh, no sir it was just a situational based question so thank you very much shalikesh and this happiness index there are 10 or 12 indexes freedom of press happiness index food security not many are there just look into these indexes yes ma'am you know indices mm -hmm. so there are uh, these are global ones where india stands why is india doing poor on most of them yes ma'am Okay. So if you have Bhutan, to look into Bhutan the plans, if you have to, sorry sir. And Bhutan is the highest. 
An Academy. Let's crack it.